Ah, the powerful 4570 government cartridge, the United States of America military round starting in 1873. It is an absolute powerhouse hunting cartridge recommended for everything, including dinosaurs. <laughs> Hello everyone, Ron Spomer here with you in another tongue-in-cheek episode. But we're going to get serious about the 4570 because I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding this old war horse. Now, as I mentioned in the start, this was the official U.S. military cartridge starting in 1873. That put it in some pretty incredibly historic times, including some of the Indian Wars, if I can call them that, and the Buffalo Harvest or slaughter, if I can call it that, um, but it persists to this day. And how long has it been since 1873? We've got 150 years or more here. Um, gosh, that's just an incredible longevity for a cartridge like this. In fact, this is the longest surviving U.S. cartridge still manufactured with a possible exception of the 4440 which was uh, used in the Winchester 1866 lever action rifle. So we're going way back here. But the amazing thing is that so many people think this is one incredible dangerous game stopping cartridge, if you will. They like it for bear protection up in Alaska in the north country of Canada. And a lot of folks think it's just an absolute knockout cartridge. And it may be, but you may be surprised at some of the smaller cartridges that can outdo it. We're going to cover a bunch of that stuff here today. So how fast does the 4570 really shoot? And how much energy does it really have? We're going to shoot over a chronograph here to measure. We've got three different loads here. There's a 300 grain Winchester that's supposed to be rated 1,880 feet per second. Then there's this Powder River with a 350 grain bullet. And that one is rated, I think, 1835. Yes, 1,025 feet per second. And then the Remington is a big one at 405 grains. And that one's supposed to be going 1,330 feet per second. We'll calculate all the energy levels and see what they're supposed to do. Right now, we just want to see what we can do with a log out there. It's a big, hard maple log. And we are going to shoot that and see if it, how badly it gets blown up or knocked over or whatever. So I'm going to put this Winchester round in, cover my ears and get our first shot. Aiming a little bit high so I can clear my chronograph. Well, it didn't blow that log back anywhere, but I knocked it over and we were going 1,537 feet per second. 1,530 feet per second is all. And that was with the Winchester load that was supposed to be going. I better double check that now. 1,880, so it's well under its registered velocity. Hmm. Go check out that log and put it back up. All right, so all I did was push that log over, sitting right here, and the bullet up, landed up high. That's going to help knock it over, obviously. If I shot lower, who knows, but I'll try to keep my shots the same now, fairly high, for the next one right beside it. Now we do the Powder River load, 350 grain bullet. We'll see what that one does for velocity and knocking over a log. Holy moly, I split the log in half. <laughs> that made a big difference. 50 grains more. <laughs> No wonder it made a difference, 2,002 feet per second. That's looking much stronger. We might need a new log for this next one. Let's just find out what this 405 grain bullet does and how fast it's going. 2,002 feet per second out of that load. That's pretty impressive. Okay, 405 grain bullet. Show us your stuff. <laughs> Doing the job. You know, the recoil was surprisingly mild on that, and 1,207 feet per second is all. So it looks like the uh, Winchester and Remington loads are a little bit underpowered from what they're advertising. But that's roughly what you would have been getting back in the day when the original 4570 came out. Now, for an energy comparison, 
thought it would be fun to shoot a 180 grain 30 out six. And this is a pretty tough bullet, should work well in that maple log. This is the old fail safe. Good, dependable, hard, controlled expansion bullet. 30 out six at 2,800 feet per second, roughly. We'll find out exactly how fast this guy's going. And then we'll see if there's a significant difference between the impact on the log with this and that 4570. Well, knocked it right over. 2,818 feet per second. Woohoo! That's a good load. Okay. Just knocked it straight over like that first load from the 4570 with the 300 grain bullet. Holes right here. By golly, it came out the backside. We didn't get that with any of these 45s. We've got the lead right here. We've got the bullet in about four inches. This one penetrated clean through. But that's probably because it's a harder bullet instead of lead. It's uh, copper with lead in the shank driving that copper nose. Good hard bullet. But as you can see, there didn't appear to be a lot of difference in the impact energy on this log between this and that 300 grain. We saw more with the 405 grain bullet and the 350 grain bullet from Powder River, but those hit higher. I imagine if I had hit up here with the 30 uh, six, this log might have gone flipping a little bit more too. So I suppose we could give it one more shot just to try. Let's do that. I hit here. Let's take one more and aim higher. All right, let's give it one more shoot higher. See if we can't split that log after we've weakened it with one shot. That makes it a little more fair for those split shots we got with a 4570. It's like we took a chunk out of it, knocked it over, didn't split it. That one was 2,873 feet per second. 2873. Ooh, a lot of little pieces of wood here. I bet it blew out the back pretty far. Yeah, I didn't get much higher than the previous shot. They're about an inch apart. Blew out the back as well. Here are a couple pieces of lead. See the jacket material there. This one, I'm not seeing any jacket, just the lead. Here we've got a bullet mangled and entrance hole is right there. So that went in a, about four inches perhaps. Pieces of meat, <laughs> pieces of wood chipped up there. No pieces in there. Anyway, I got my firewood split. Jacket material still on this one. Almost get it out of there. There we go. Here's another bullet. Pretty mangled by that wood. Whereas those 30 out six bullets, man, they just zipped right through. There you go. It's a difference between a 4570 and a 30 out six on impact energy. Not a heck of a lot. <laughs> So there's the 4570, guys. If you're thinking that might be the one for you, dive into it, do some more research, add to what I've already told you, and uh, let me know what you think of it. I have hunted with it several times. I've never been blown away with it, but I have friends who swear it's the absolute finest whitetail cartridge ever designed. <laughs> hey, this is Ron Spomer standing in for the 4570. We'll see you next time. Hunt honest and shoot straight.